Hi, thanks for staying for this sharing. I'm Sing Lin. I'm from Tan Tok Seng Hospital. I'm a speech therapist and about of the patients I work with are patients with swallowing difficulties. So this challenge statement is about creating an IDDSI level verification tool. Um, and IDDSI uh, stands for International Dysphagia Diet Initiative. Um, they refer to the levels of diet and fluids textures uh, like puree diet, mince diet or um, slightly thick and extremely thick fluids. So these are um, diet and fluid textures that are standardized internationally and gradually being adopted by hospitals across the world. So these are different levels of textures that are used to give patients with dysphagia and, or solo impairment, um, give them a safe way to eat or drink. So basically patients with solo impairment, they often need um, to have their diet or fluids modified and modifying in this context um, will be in a sense of changing the food and fluid textures uh, based on IDDSI standards. And speech therapists or doctors are typically the ones who recommend for modified diet and fluids, depending on what is deemed to be safe for a patient with dysphagia. Um, these textures usually correspond with the IDDSI levels mentioned. So hopefully this gives you information about uh, and some insights about the topic before we move on to the ch challenge statement. Yeah, so next, please. So our challenge statement is how we might test texture of food and consistency of fluids um, in a more efficient and accurate manner. Um, next, next, please. The need for this will be um, patients with swallowing impairment um, who are recommended by speech therapists to modify their food textures or fluid uh, consistencies. So for example, one patient might need a pureed diet and uh, moderately thick fluids. So currently there is no standardized or objective way or objective tool in the market to check if the food and fluid given to the patient uh, is modified to the right level. Um, if not prepared correctly, then the outcome will be the risk of aspiration, which means the food going into the airway or choking for both um, adults or pediatric patients with dysphagia. Next, please. Yeah. So the current methods that are being, are being used to manage uh, this uh, will be that users usually rely, users mean uh, caregivers or a hospital, uh, kitchen staff, um, they usually rely on um, combination of expertise and experience to visually identify the texture or consistency um, of the diet and fluid they give to patients, they serve to patients. So they make use of descriptive guidelines that are available and uh, complement with the test methods that IDDSI framework suggests uh, for them to use. And typically, these kind of testing and audits are done in a daily basis um, in during and after food preparation and prior to consumption. And usually the ones who test on a daily basis will be the kitchen staff who, pro, uh, who prepare the meals or nurses who serve the meals. Um, on and off, um, speech therapists uh, and um, dietitians might assess um, and audit the textures um, once a month or every few weeks. Okay, next please. The gaps in this uh, for this challenge statement will be the use of a visual identification and the fact that the use of a visual identification and the current IDDSI test methods are not exactly accurate um, due to the subjectivity and varied nature of food and fluids. So especially uh, for Asian dishes, um, it's also quite tricky to use the current guidelines and uh, uh, alone to actually test the accuracy and safety of the textures given to patients. And on top of that, the current test methods that are being used, um, they are quite manual and they take a lot of time. Okay, next please. So uh, in all, basically, we would, uh, would like to see whether there is a way to objectively or efficiently um, and reliably identify the levels of food textures and fluid consistencies um, that still match up to the current IDDSI standards that has already been ad adopted. 
Next slide. Okay, so the current solutions uh, are the current methods. Actually, they take a long time and, and the problem is with the uh, some form of subjectivity. So if I, to give you a better understanding, the testing of te um, diet texture will involve the use of some of the IBDSI test methods, which are quite manual, uh, like the fork drip test, spoon tilt test, and fork pressure test, which all means that different people might do it a little bit differently, even though there are some of the general guidelines in, instruction, in the instructions. Um, and also it's uh, based on the visual appearance and tasting and experience of uh, the person who audits the diet um, being served to patients. Um, for the fluids wise, typically if there is a, a certain thickened fluids that we're going to be serving to patients, uh, on and off when we're doing audits, it will be using the syringe flow test, which is um, super time consuming because it uh, involves the use of actually putting the thickened fluids into a syringe and then uh, releasing it and uh, identifying it, whether it passes or fails the test. Um, and usually you have to do it a number of times to ensure that uh, your testing is accurate. Um, next slide, please. So the solution we are looking for is basically uh, really an objective and efficient and reliable tool that can help us uh, identify uh, the levels of food textures and fluid textures. Um, next slide, please. Yeah. And uh, ideally, it will include features that include um, temperature me uh, measurement and the analytical, uh, analytical ability to assess and inform where is the direction of error. So be it size, um, the hardness, the softness, or the moisture level. So then it can help um, anyone who uses the gadget or product to know how to troubleshoot and then achieve the right consistency or texture that will then be safe for a patient. Next slide, please. Yeah, so the tool is going to be, like I said, will be used by kitchen staff, mainly um, nurses um, in the hospitals or long-term care uh, facilities. Um, but it does not mean that it does. Uh, it will also extend to the um, caregivers um, who also might have to manage patients who are on long-term need for modified food and uh, fluids. And usually um, a tool that is uh, more foolproof and user-friendly will be um, useful for anyone who can use or uh, who knows how to easily know how to use the product. So the main goal of this um, challenge statement is to have a product to that redesigns the job of um, food and fluid testing uh, by reducing the steps and then increasing the accuracy and the consistency of um, the audits and thereafter to ensure that patients with swollen impairment receive the food and fluids that are really safe and consistently safe uh, for their consumption. Yeah, next slide please. Yeah, so this is the IP arrangement um, which can be discussed uh, further. Um, thanks for listening and I can take any questions uh, after this, yeah. Yep, uh, thank you uh, Chai Sing Lin, I think very informative uh, presentation. Um, Yes, let's open the floor for any Q&A. So meanwhile, uh, people typing in the Q&A, we have a few questions. Um, are there any additional features such as portability uh, of the device or the material built uh, is, is, is part of the consideration? Yes, um, definitely portability is part of the consideration. In fact, uh, it will be um, definitely very helpful if we're thinking about having this product to be also uh, used outside um, institutions uh, and for patients, uh, caregivers, um, especially now when um, care is moving towards community as well to smaller, smaller institutions, smaller care facilities and also the home environment. Um, yeah. Great, uh, thank you. Um, second question, uh, how big is the scale of this um, uh, challenge? Like how many patients typically uh, require uh, uh, this texture of food in size? Yeah, actually uh, a significant uh, proportion of uh, patients uh, do require um, 
modified uh, diet and fluids. So while patients with dysphagia, we manage them uh, in other ways like therapy as well. Um, about 90% of patients with dysphagia actually still need um, modified fluids and diets. Um, in the interim at least or in, uh, or in the long term. So for these patients, when there is a risk of choking or risk of uh, food going down the airway, then they need, they, that's when the need for um, safe consistency or food consistency is required. And I think what's lacking here is um, the um, ability to, for kitchen staff to consistently prepare um, um, diet and uh, fluid textures that are safe uh, with um, because uh, for in terms of regulating what's uh, safe for them uh, whether it's in hospitals or in uh, institutions got it um, and uh, we have one more question so can we propose uh, instead of a device that um, uh, process the food um, uh, consistently rather than a testing phase in terms of the process of food, because I think uh, I think we have discussed this before. I mean, in our teams as well, um, it's a it's a very good consideration actually. However, I think uh, in terms of uh, the the nature of how Asian foods is being prepared and the variability of it, um, it's it, there can also be tricky consistencies. Like um, if you think about ingredients like uh, winter melon or hairy gourd. Um, these are some consistencies that um, are difficult to uh, um, to target at the um, preparation level, but rather if there is a tool where we can um, use to consistently assess what is the con um, texture that is correct and what is uh, wrong, then the type of food what, whatever type of food that um, comes through the kitchen or comes through homes or long-term care institutions can then um, be um, checked in and ensure that it's um, safe for patients. I hope that, that answers. I hope that answers the question.